Is it a scooter? Is it a bike? No, it's the E-Move Roadrunner. Powerful dual motors that are of different sizes and industry first, mammoth 14 inch tires, a large memory foam seat, adjustable MTB fork suspension, and a removable battery pack join forces to produce a ride unlike anything we've tested before. The product of three rounds of rigorous testing and iterations, the Roadrunner is the summation of all that is great about the E-Move brand. Durable design, fantastic range, respectable speed and an eye for the unconventional just don't let anyone else try it there's a strong chance that you won't get it back the roadrunner isn't perfect few scooters are things can get a bit bumpy due to the limited suspension while the seat may leave your buttocks feeling a little bit bruised after long rides but these are trifling concerns in the grand scheme of things e-move is shaking up the scooter world with this model and i'm more than happy to come along for the ride. After two months of testing the E-Move Roadrunner, I've summarized my findings into 10 things that I love and three things that I think should be improved. But as always, before we dive into those, let me give you a rundown of what you can expect from the Roadrunner as well as who I recommend it for. With a maximum load capacity of 330 pounds, it's a motorized mule. You can have the confidence in the Roadrunner's ability to perform regardless of your size. And with those adjustable handlebars, this is a scooter that can pretty much be custom fitted to your exact needs. Combined with its blend of speed and comfort, it distinguishes itself as a great option for both commuting and weekend frolics. But be warned, the Roadrunner can burn rubber. This is a powerful scooter, so we advise taking it easy on the throttle if you're a newcomer. Thankfully, the combination of the huge wheels and foot pegs make handling this little houser a doodle, so there's a lot of fun to be had regardless of your experience level. Now, if that sounds like a scooter that you'd like to hear more about, keep watching as I unpack its design, features, build and ride quality, performance, and how it stacks up against its competitors. One of the Roadrunner's most distinctive features is its removable 1,253 watt hours Dynavolt battery. See, Dynavolt cells are usually found on motorcycles, so this gives you a flavor of the show-stopping power that the Roadrunner can summon. For context, the Roadrunner wields 3.5 times more battery power than the Fido Q1S, arguably one of its greatest rivals. We first came across Dynavolt batteries when reviewing Apollo's models. These batteries are reliable and perform alongside other name brands like LG and Samsung where recharge cycles are concerned. And because the battery pack is removable, its range is potentially huge. You can expect a maximum range of 53 miles off a single charge or 35 miles under realistic riding conditions and 106 miles if you buy a spare battery. Now, additional batteries are available from Voro Motors for $490. They're pretty big, but at 15 pounds, they can be carried in a rucksack and even come with a carry handle. Armed with a 350 watt motor at the front and a 500 watt motor at the rear, the Roadrunner is a seriously powerful scooter. Anyone looking for a slow paced cruising model, be wary, this Fizz's motors are 3.4 times more powerful than other popular seated scooters like the Fido Q1S, while its top speed of 34 miles per hour blows all other seated models aside from its big bro, the Roadrunner Tronic, out of the water. Our tests also revealed that the Roadrunner can hit 15 miles per hour from a standstill in 3.9 seconds. This dismantles the Fido Q1S's time of 6.7 seconds, solidifying its position as one of the zippiest seated scooters on the market. Predictably, the Roadrunner is also a hill eater. It swats aside gradual inclines without breaking a sweat, and it can even muster the power to take on moderate inclines, although it will slow. 
At $1,795, the Roadrunner can be compared with nine other models within a $500 price range. When ranking top speed against price, it sits firmly in the mid table with the popular Mantis V2 taking gold, but this is no surprise given its more powerful 60 volt, 1000 watt dual motors. It is important to acknowledge here that though the Roadrunner may not leave your jaw on the floor when compared to other models in its price class, it is the only seated scooter on the list. Now this somewhat skews the comparison, but it is worth bearing in mind if power per dollar is influential in your decision making. The picture changes completely when we switch our focus to weight. Out of a further nine comparable models that weigh within five pounds on either side of the Roadrunner's 55 pounds, not a single model tops it. If we take a closer look at the comparison, there's also only one other scooter in the list that can be fitted with a seat, and that's the slower E-Move Cruiser. This therefore marks the Roadrunner out as the single best seated scooter for power. Moving our attention to mileage, the Roadrunner performs highly when compared to other scooters in its price class. It loses out to the Inakim Ox Super with its large 60 volt 21 amp LG battery, but it should be noted that both the Roadrunner and Inakim batteries are very similar in the amount of energy that they store. Besides, both scooters go toe to toe when ridden under realistic conditions. Digging deeper into the comparisons, the Roadrunner continues its podium performance run where it takes second place for its maximum range against scooters of a similar weight. It's a 1-2 for E-Move with the Cruiser edging out its cousin thanks to its 52 volt 30 amp LG battery. Compared to the Roadrunner, it stores 25% more energy. It can also be fitted with a seat at an additional cost of $65. Now this scooter is a great alternative for riders that want the luxury of a long range stand up and sit down scooter. The Roadrunner sports semi hydraulic brakes that represent a big improvement on earlier iterations of the model. With these new bad boys installed, you can expect to come from a stop from 15 miles per hour in just three meters. For perspective, this is better than some Daltra models and classifies the Roadrunner as having very good stopping power. It's also worth noting that the discs are large and this helps to dissipate heat, keeping them working in prime condition. Now, while we usually suggest shifting your body weight backwards over the rear wheel when you brake, the Roadrunner doesn't allow such movement, and so you need to brace yourself with your arms to ensure that you don't slide off the seat when braking. The headline here is that the handlebars can be adjusted to suit your height and riding style, but just as noteworthy is the fact that they can be repositioned either towards or away from you. This, in our books, is a great feature of its design. You can tailor the scooter to your preferred riding stance. My only grumble, due to its small size, you may end up riding in a hunched over position if you're over six foot, though the adjustable handlebars do negate this to some extent. The handlebars can also be folded down to sit parallel to the frame to make the Roadrunner narrower and more portable, making it easier to store. And considering the Roadrunner's power and stamina, it's actually pretty light at 55 pounds. This makes it fairly easy to carry over short distances. As for the rest of the handlebars, located on the right is the easy to use thumb throttle, while the buttons marked R and I allow you to toggle between single and dual motor modes. You can also easily access your lighting, turn signals and horn via the multi-switch on the left, as well as view all your vital stats, including speed, mileage and battery life via the LCD display, though the glossy screen can make it difficult to read in direct sunlight. Finishing the handlebars are two ergonomically shaped hand grips that flare out at the ends to keep your hands in a comfortable yet firm position. There's no disguising the fact that when it comes to the frame, the Roadrunner is more bike than it is scooter. In fact, it wouldn't go amiss in a lineup of Super 73 e-bikes. This alone guarantees sturdiness with tough aluminium alloy tubes welded together at sharp angles to create a sleek aesthetic 
with edge. Perhaps most distinguishable of all though is the Roadrunner's grippy foot pegs. They're a key detail that make this scooter not an e-bike. After all, e-bikes have pedals. The pegs deliver the control and handling that you'd expect. The difference they make is actually quite profound. As a result of its bike-inspired frame, it's incredibly easy to carve from side to side and you can lean into the turns using the pegs as a base. One of the Roadrunner's crowning glories is a set of wheels that wouldn't look too out of place on a bike. Its chunky 14-inch air filled tires do a fantastic job at cushioning your ride, but even more impressive is the maneuverability that they provide. Combined with the stabilizing, weight-carrying foot pegs, they allow you to turn with unparalleled ease and agility. Sure, purists may say that they're more like small BMX wheels, but there's just no denying the fun that they bestow. Confusingly, the component that allows you to adjust the forks has ABS written on it. Under normal circumstances, ABS stands for Anti-Locking Braking System, but in this case, it has nothing to do with braking. Instead, it's the acronym used for the type of damper that's used, known as the Manitou Absolute Plus. This mechanism allows you to either soften or stiffen the forks, meaning you can tailor the shock absorption to your environment. Though small in stature, it's built to handle pretty much anything you can throw at it. Being an e-move scooter, the build quality is unsurprisingly excellent. With the solid frame and robust aluminium fenders in place, there's no rattle in the ride, while the cable management is neat and tidy to eliminate any potential for interference. The well-positioned headlight is bright enough to illuminate paths ahead in areas that are already partly lit, but it's worth investing in an additional headlight to fully tick the safety box. At the rear is a collection of lights that masquerade as a tail light, brake lights, turn signals, and hazard lights. Although the lights are somewhat visible during the day, we advise using your hand or leg signals to turn. Thankfully, it's easier to do on the Roadrunner than on standard scooters because of its massive tire that allow you to maintain balance while riding one-handed or one-footed. Okay, so we just ran through the things that I love about the E-Move Roadrunner. Now let's take a look at the three areas that could be improved. When the prototype came out, the Roadrunner seat was reported to feel a little unwelcoming. Thankfully, eMove took this feedback on board and introduced an improved memory foam seat. Could it still be more comfortable? I'd say so. A prolonged stint on the Roadrunner may leave you a little sore, but hey, we can't quibble too much. This is just one of two seated scooters. The other is the Roadrunner Tronic that allows you to adjust its front suspension for a more plush riding sensation. However, while the forks do a good job of soaking up surface imperfections, there's no suspension at the rear, so you still feel the impact of bumps and vibrations. While its bike-like frame forces you to adopt a riding position that lends itself to a center of gravity that gives you balance, the one thing to be aware of is that at fast speeds, the Roadrunner suspension can create a bit of instability if set to a spongy setting. We suggest stiffening the forks or locking them out completely if you plan to put the pedal to the metal. The only drawbacks in terms of the Roadrunner's build quality are its lack of a water resistance rating and the slightly too short front fender. Consequently, the bottom of the battery is littered with water splashes when it's wet out. With this in mind, we don't recommend taking it for a spin in the rain. So is the eMove Roadrunner any good and do the pros outweigh the cons? 
well at $1,795 the eMove Roadrunner isn't cheap and yet one ride on this quirky little rocket will send you heading to the bank. For the fun it brings alone it's worth every dime, it's a stress free jump on and go joyride. It has enough power to get your adrenaline glands pumping and it's packed with a wealth of premium features all of which combine to deliver what we think is the best seated electric scooter. So if seated scooters are your bag, then the Roadrunner will turn your world upside down. It's light years ahead of our now second favorite, the Fido Q1S. So what do you think about the eMove Roadrunner? Are there any other points that you would have added? If so, let me know in the comments. If you're ready to hit the buy button, you can scan this QR code or of course, click the links in the description. Now for those of you that would like to know what other scooters I recommend as alternatives or want to see our full performance tests, you can read our full review on electricscooterinsider.com, which I've linked to in the description below. And finally, if you found value from this video, do me a favor, smash that like button and subscribe to become an Electric Scooter Insider. As always, I say this every time, but your support is appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.